Hello, this is Manic Insomniac, and welcome to another audio log detailing my uh, adventures in becoming a DM for uh, D and D. Um, just played our third session today. Um, it was quite, quite fun. My players seem to be enjoying things. It's going well, I think, De definitely very well. Um, but uh, th today was my first um, experience with a large-scale combat. Um, D and D tends to not usually have too many combatants. Like I know in um, AD and D, it's particularly you tend to have a lot of hirelings and stuff. Um, but it's not really built for many more than maybe a couple of dozen at best. But I actually uh, had them head off to fight a force of uh, uh, goblins uh, that was around 60 strong, um, quite a large number. And I thought it'd be interesting to detail my thoughts on that a little bit. So uh, last week I had them scout out this place, and they managed to come across one of the goblin scouting parties that had been raiding the farmlands um, nearby. And uh, they managed to take out all the goblins apart from the, 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 the little band's leader, a little goblin called Puck, who they quickly charmed. Um, so straight away, um, all the difficulty in needing to know numbers, location, um, anything like that, they had uh, someone who could tell them. I mean, this little goblin was just like, yep, I'll tell you anything you need to know. You're going to give me food. Um, <laughs> I'm going to become a big boss myself. It's great. Get my own warg. Stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, they, they convinced him he was on a secret mission and everything, even though they'd locked him in a cage one night because they was in town. It was fantastic. But them and the guild they're working, working for, the Freelancers Guild, uh, send out a force. So the, we had the three party members, plus their hirelings. We had the second in command of the... Um, of the guild, a dwarf called Barak Hardison. Um, he brought a force of men, halflings, and dwarves with him, as well as um, the guild leader's niece, who was a cleric, and a couple of um, urgent knights. Uh, these are knights that follow the uh, the god of spirits uh, in my setting. Um, who um, they came along because it was their job to watch the mountain passes, and the, the mountains in the area are riddled with tunnels and stuff. The whole idea is these mountains are called the Barrier Mountains, and uh, these mountains are pretty much the only reason why the area with they're in, called the Vale, survived um, the ogre takeover of the Dwarven Lands. Like the Vale was part of the Dwarven Lands; it was part of where their human allies lived, all that type of stuff. But because the fort in the mountains, the mountains being a natural barrier, uh, they never got past it. Um, so while the ogres are still uh, occasionally probing at the, the forces and sending raiding parties around on the ocean passes. They send um, their goblin allies, the ogres, send their goblin allies through the mountain passes to try and uh, mess with uh, farmlands and supply routes and all that type of stuff. And the urgent knights' job was to watch these tunnels, and they do because various reasons. Um, they block up tunnels, but for one, which they have a fort guarding. Uh, but unfortunately, the goblins have found another way out. So we had the entire group go up and try and find this goblin camp. Um, so I had this uh, small valley area, um, just poking into the mountains, where a lot of uh, where one of the main rivers passing through the region uh, is springed from. And uh, again, they had Puck to lead them, so it was fairly easy for them to get there. Like they managed to avoid. They didn't have to go and check every tunnel and cave in the area, which is good because there's all sorts of nasties in the area. Um, one they found out about quite quickly being uh, an infestation of ghouls in an old um, dwarven mithril mine. Um, but that's for a later date, I think. Uh, so they got to the. Uh, they caught a another raiding force, stronger this time after lo the loss of Puck's force. And. Uh, our wizard quite expertly put the entire band to sleep, and they just conked their heads, and that was that. So my my idea of trying to ambush them and test them didn't work out very well because they just put the entire force to sleep. Didn't even need the NPC party with them; they just went boop, and it was done. They then uh, found the enemy base, and the, the the goblins were holed up in sort in in, in a cave at the base of this waterfall. But outside, they had a pit with their wargs in. So the party sneaks up and again puts the goblins on guard to sleep, uh, slaughters them, and leaves the wargs trapped in their enclosure. The, the goblins have put them in a caged enclosure where they couldn't get out and escape. I haven't gone for intelligent wargs, I've just gone for meat eating beasts in, after a fashion. 
like uh, the wargs were the the goblin leaders uh, mounts essentially that was it and they were just kept outside the goblins had no chance so again completely destroyed they then had to uh, they then decided to send puck in to call the enemies out uh, like like having pretend um, the uh, having pretend he'd just returned and all oh, the wargs had escaped and they were having problems getting them back in the cage send help so they ran in and then a small force of goblins come out and the party along with their allies very expertly surrounded them and killed them in quick order again fantastic but then of course the goblins in the rest of the goblins the main force of them were left were aware of the party's presence i think uh, off the top of my head there was about 40 left inside the cave or something like that including um uh the remaining goblin shaman one one of the shamans was uh, killed uh in the, the party coming out to check on the wargs um before he could even get a spell off and uh the goblin leader for the, the point um who never even saw combat unfortunately so the party managed to go in the cave and they, they slowly just slaughtered their way through 50 goblins quite quickly and the the goblin leader took what he had left and ran. He, he descended deep, deeper into the cave, which he hooks up into the, the large labyrinth and system and stuff like that. But uh, what was interesting about the, the whole thing, which just sounds like a routine goblin kind of thing, was large-scale combat. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the episode, it was interesting. Like, It's something I wanted to try in a D&D &D setting, because I've, I've, I've done it before. Um, I used to play... Um, uh, games Workshop games quite a lot, uh, such as uh, 40k. I've even played a uh, Fantasy Flight's uh, X-Wing, and but my original wargaming game, way, way, way back when, was uh, the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. So I'm very, very used to running through large numbers of combatants quickly, just rolling, rolling, rolling. And uh, it su wasn't surprised. It was surprisingly not as clunky as I thought it would be. I mean, we was using Roll20 um, to play the game, so uh, the grid's there, I've got tokens for all the goblins and stuff, it wasn't that hard, it was just tracking them on paper that was the, the main part of the difficulty. Um, what I might do in future, if I ever do another combat like that, is uh, uh, have some physical tokens as well, uh, to be more easily able to just track everything. Um, it's when there's 50 or so goblins running around it's like oh hang on which one was that again because he's got that HP and he's got that HP and he's just struck him so he should only have that much health left but if it was that one then that one's actually dead and it's, I, I did, don't think I did too bad of a job but it was definitely um, it could have gone a bit of a clusterfuck very quickly and then there was also the, the, the call of balance for the combat um, I mean the party I'm playing with quite veteran players. They knew what they were doing. They quickly segregated any group of goblins, wiped them out, and kept their higher level um, armor classes at the front of the party. Um, they had range weapon traps, ambushes, all that type of stuff. But it could have gone very, very differently. I mean, they, they essentially took out 16 goblins with two spells. That was it. Like, there was nothing else to do. And. Because of a surprise round on one on the one combat, they basically got two turns of attacks before I could do anything because of initiative. Um, it just, yeah, could have gone very very differently. So I think balance is something I'm definitely gonna have to work on. Like it doesn't sound, it sounds like oh yeah, you just give that many goblins per person and it's done. It's not that simple for when it actually comes to combat. Like, um, what is balanced? I, don't, I didn't want to make it too easy, but I also didn't want to make it too hard. In a pitched battle, would it have gone as easy for the players? Or would it have actually gone easier? I mean, it, one of the difficulties for the players was actually seeing some of the goblins because they were fighting in caves. But even that, they handled relatively easy. So I'm wondering how this battle would have gone on paper. Um, on, on a flat plane, rather. Because um, it wasn't... It's something I'm going to have to learn, I think. Because what I had was um, a goblin warband. There was a war chief who never actually got into combat. He, um, if I remember rightly, he doesn't fight as a goblin. He fights as like a hobgoblin or something. Yeah, I think so. I had a couple of first level uh, shaman, which are basically essentially uh, goblin clerics. And they were using uh, curse, which is like reverse bless, to, um, well, one of them would have, um, to reduce their player's chance to hit. 
Um, then I had a number of uh, goblin sub bosses. Um, I think there was about eight of those altogether. They all had they all fight as orcs, so again slightly tougher, nothing too major. And then I think it was I think it was like 58 regular goblins plus eight wargs in total. Now the wargs are probably the most dangerous things in the bunch, especially when combined with the shaman and just the sheer numbers of goblins. But the wargs never did anything, and I think that was probably the downfall of my choice. Um, but then again, it wasn't impossible to fight the players. Um, they were very much, they were very clever in that they kept their higher level armor classes to the front. So for most of the combat, I, I needed 19s and 20s to even hit the players. But if if I hit with a 20, it's an 8 right crit. So I'm already doing extra damage. Like all, all I have to do is hit, and with the amount of dice I was rolling to hit, eventually I was going to hit them a few times. Um, I, I managed to take out, uh, I managed to heavily wound the player cleric. Although he healed himself up twice, um, I took out one of the the knights who were paladins. Um, I took out a halfling rogue, and I took out uh, a couple of spearmen. Uh, wounded them all, uh, hiling spearmen. Nothing too major, but for the, for the most part, like they got out unscathed. So I'm wond wondering, should I have made that uh, thing harder? Should I have had uh, a couple of walks through the enclosure just to give them that little bit more danger I'm not trying to kill the players but I want it to not be a breeze and that's that's where the balance thing is like how would how do you balance a an encounter like how how, how do GMs do that that's something I'm gonna have to learn and something I'm definitely gonna be asking my fellow players uh, many of which are uh, veteran DMs themselves um, looking up guys and stuff like that but if you've got ideas like drop it in the comments like I I want to know how you balance that because I, I wasn't only balancing the um, the goblins but I also had to balance the, the the NPC side which had some fairly powerful characters in it because they were named characters and I decided long ago what their stats were and everything it just made sense for them to be there um, but the party of what, five dwarves, three halflings, two paladins, and I think a cleric and seven humans uh, of various strengths. Was, probably could have taken the goblins on themselves using similar tactics. They might have had heavier casualties without the party, but it wasn't impossible for them. So yeah, interesting times. I will have to practice this, but it won't. I'm not going to be throwing large-scale combat at the players all the time. Um, it was more of a test for me as well as something that fit with the story that I'm trying to tell at the moment. So, what are your experiences with large scale combat? Uh, please let me know, drop a comment or something, that would be fantastic. Um, but otherwise, I'm, always, uh, I'm also always looking for people to uh, come on and join me for a quick interview and chat about their fun moments as a player. Uh, if you've seen my other series I've done D&D player moments where we talk about exciting or inspiring stories they've got from playing D&D, whether as a DM or a player. Like I want to hear your stuff so uh, drop me a message. Um, I would love to have some people on to talk and entertain the viewers I guess. But until next time, I've been Manic Insomniac. Good night.